What is a histogram and how do you read one? Hello everybody and today I'm going to be explaining how to interpret a histogram. Now a histogram is one of the simplest, easy to use and helpful exposure tools available. Now I have a camera pointing over there and this monitor is recording the output of the camera so I can show you what's going on. So you can call up the histogram in live view mode by pressing the info button on your camera multiple times until it appears. There it is. That on the top right is the histogram. So a histogram is basically a graph of luminance value against pixel count. The left edge of your histogram represents a luminance value of zero, which is pure black, and the right edge would be pure white. And then there's everything in between. The left part of your histogram represents the shadows, which are the darker bits of your image. The middle part of the histogram would be the midtones, and the part towards the right would be your highlights, the brighter bits of your image. So the histogram will change with your image. So if I stick my hand in the frame, you can see the histogram change about. I'm introducing a lot more midtones in the histogram. So right now you can see there's a small spike in the histogram, which means there's a lot of pixels or a lot of my image is falling in this luminance range. You can see there's a small spike in the shadows. It's not exactly black yet, it's almost there, but this little spike probably corresponds to this little pen in the foreground which is the darker parts of the image. So if I cover the pen, that dark spike should go away. So, yep, there it is. So now if I intentionally overexpose my image, let me bump up the ISO a bit more. You can see the histogram getting squashed towards the right edge because there's a lot more pixels, more parts of my image are bright now. And if you look at the rightmost edge, there's a huge spike. That means a lot of pixels are crushed to pure white. You generally want to avoid that because detail is lost once it's crushed to the right edge because that means that details are lost because they are clipped to pure white. So now if I intentionally underexpose my image, you can see the histogram being moved, squashed towards the left edge. Right now there's a lot of shadows in my image as you can see, a lot of spikes in the shadow region, a lot of pixels are very dark and similar to the right edge, you can see there's a huge spike towards the left edge of the image. That means those are crushed to pure black. Again, details are lost as well. So the general rule of thumb for exposing correctly using a histogram would be to balance out the histogram towards the middle. So if I were to try to expose my image properly this time round. So now that the image is properly exposed, you can see the histogram is balanced towards the middle. We have a healthy dose of midtones, some shadows, again, that pen holder in the foreground. And if you look carefully towards the right bottom corner, you can see there's a tiny speck of white. That means there's still a tiny amount of pixels that are clipped to pure white. So on my monitor here, I'm going to enable zebras, which allows me to see which parts of the image are clipped. And I'm going to film my monitor here so you can see some parts of that tape dispenser in the background over there is clipped to pure white. That's where all the zebra stripes are showing up. So that little bit of the image is clipped to pure white and that corresponds as that tiny speck in the bottom right hand side of the histogram. Now of course there are exceptions for exposing your image by balancing out the histogram towards the middle. Say if you're intentionally going for a very high key blown out look, then it's no surprise that your histogram is going to be clustered towards the right. Or if you're going for a very low key dark look, then you're going to have a lot more pixels in the shadow areas. So that's pretty much it on how you read a histogram. It simply tells you how much of your image is how bright. So it's a very useful exposure tool. So that's pretty much it for today, everybody. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. If you have any questions, any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.